The humble brick. We've been using these since the 11th century here in the UK. And I've come to Ibstock Brick Factory to find out more about the engineering that goes into making these simple things that are fundamental to our everyday lives. Red Leicester, and we are not talking cheese. All the different types of brick and clay, right? Is that Amazing, I didn't realise there were so many varieties. And this is just where we store the material. So it's taken from the quarry, stored here, and then it's taken onto the factories. And where are we heading right now? So we're going up the top hole road first, so you can actually see more of the quarry as, as we go in. I'll tell you what it's like being in this Land Rover. First of all, the ground is really uneven, so we're rattling around um, as we drive along a really beautiful site, to be honest with you. It's like, it's kind of like being on some Mars landscape. Everything's really red um, and really vast. You've got like huge stones which get ground down into smaller bits of clay. And uh, it is incredible to think that where we are right now gets turned into bricks. It's just incredible. So how did this all begin? So way back when, this would have just been a field. There would have been nothing here, just a field. So before we can even think about digging the quarry, we need to check what's in the ground essentially. So the first thing that we would do is we would look at the British Geological Survey information. So they've mapped the entirety of the UK to tell you what the geology is in the ground. I feel that there is a lot of engineering going on here. A lot of geology, Yes. but tons of engineering. Yes. Tell me about it. So, so much of the engineering here comes down to safety and the quarry design. So we have to make sure that we're doing it safely, we're following the quarry regulations, and a lot of that comes down to the geology, the strength of the materials, uh, the engineering properties of the materials, and all of that comes down to the quarry design. So you'll have your designs for your slopes, your haul rows, your ramps, our tip. Um, so one of the very important things about the tip here is that because it's where the lagoon is, we need to make sure that the water is draining properly. Water is the enemy, essentially, in quarries, and it can cause massive problems. And if the water isn't managed properly, the tip will fail. Is this clay? This will be clay, yes. Does this become bricks? So this was formed when the glaciers melted and they kind of just left everything along behind. So because it's filled with a lot of contaminants, we can't use that in the bricks just because we don't know what it's in. Or if we need to get access to the clay underneath, we remove it and put it in an overburden tip over there. This doesn't become bricks, even though it's the same color. You know your stuff. I want to see more. I want to see where the trucks take this material. Okay. Can we take a look? We can go, let's do it. And we are now at the Eclipse factory. Feels like a bit of a sky train situation. It is taking clay that's been extracted from the quarry, it's crushed it, and it's going all the way across into the actual factory building where it's gonna get ground down into smaller pieces and mixed with other elements. It's all part of the whole process of making bricks. I've been told to wear these because it's gonna get loud. <laughs> Being outside feeds into the top of this, which yeah. is called the wet man. Um, Inside you've got two big rotating wheels that crush the clay down and drip feed it onto this uh, belt, sending it through the process. Check this so, out, this is amazing. What's going on in there? So we use the white stuff, it's actually lime, powdered lime, because when we're making cream bricks it helps with a little bit of the bleaching process. Oh, okay. uh, so rather than going aesthetic. yellow, yeah, yeah, it uh, keeps them white up. <laughs> You're grinding it down into like well, so I finished school, did my A-levels, um, decided I didn't really want to go to uni at the time and I, I, I left and became an a, a electrical engineer and apprentice. Um, and yeah, so since then, uh, worked in a few different factories and then eventually moved up to this one. Uh, moved into a bit more controls, automation, so programming and, and yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> Out of the conveyor belt. Humans would have been doing this at one point in time. Yeah. Now robots are instead, right? It's crazy, yeah, yeah. All day, every day, just picking up and moving bricks. Now we need engineers to program that AI. Yeah. So it's not that robots are taking jobs away, they're actually creating more jobs. 
Yes, yeah, that's it, creating more skilled jobs, yeah. It's really good. That's where we come in. You <laughs> think? I do, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're like, actually, I want the robot to go to the left instead of the right. <laughs> Let me write a bit of code. In a fashion. <laughs> what you'll see here is the robots are picking up the bricks from the belt and they're putting them down in certain orientations which aid with the firing process. Depending on how we stack them, depends on how much airflow can come through and the colours that they fire to. So oh, wow. it's really crucial to get them right. It's like yeah. watching synchronised swimming, but they're robots and they're not wearing swimming costumes. They're starting to move and not like bricks at this point. You think, again, people would have been doing this Fifteen hundred years ago, crazy. <laughs> have they come out of the mould when they're going in? When they flip over, that's when they then come out. Okay, because they don't look like bricks. They don't look like bricks now, but when they're over and out, you'll see down there, that's when they start to look a bit more like bricks. Right now, we're feeding into the dryer, which basically takes the bricks and, and get them back down to about 0.5% moisture. So they're workable and they can be stacked and, and set on, on to kill cards. So all of this is shape making, yep. dehydrating, yep. Yep. and then it goes into the oven. We are standing on top of the kill. I do not want to fall through one no. of these stones. Definitely not. That it's would be extremely hot. Super hot, over a thousand degrees super, super hot. So what you can see is a load of different burners that are firing down into the bricks. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is hot. I promise you. Ah, oh, it's really nice. So the blue tube is a supplier there that will feed the burner, just giving it some oxygen to ignite. And then you see the yellow tube. That's where we feed the gas in, because uh, obviously that's the combustion fuel. So just to give you an insight, we are now waiting for a female engineer to unlock the key piece that is going to allow us to see inside this. And what you've just looked at there is a thousand degrees C, at least. We're getting to the final moment where the bricks come out, baked and ready to be built with. So if you look in, this is the exit of the kiln. And if you look down the length of it, you'll be able to see all of the burners that are firing, all of the bricks, taking it up to over a thousand degrees. Um, they're what's really cooking, cooking or firing the bricks, um, making them ready to, to be put into houses, basically. We are at the end point of this massive long process that's happened in this giant factory. You know, and to think that centuries ago, all of this was done by hand and it's now done by intelligence, essentially. Yeah. We're in an industry that's sort of catching up with the times. We're introducing all of this new technology. We're really trying to refine and make better product. And, and yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really fun, challenging, interesting. And again, every day is different. It's, uh, it's great. <laughs>